Hi everyone, my name is Shiri Cohen and I'm going to present, not a coincidence, sub-quadratic Byzantine agreement with high probability. This is a joint work with my advisor, Edith Kedar from the Technion and Alexander Spiegelman from Vimware. So just to start off with a bit motivation, Byzantine agreement is widely used in many large scale, scale systems, such as Libra, Algorand, Hyperledger, and the list goes on and on. And it motivates both the synchrony and low communication complexity. From the FLP result, we know that one cannot solve Byzantine agreement deterministically in the presence of faults in a synchronous model. We also know from the leverage lower bounds that any deterministic protocol requires quadratic message complexity. So from the two, we conclude that we must settle on randomized consensus. And our contribution is we present first subquadratic asynchronous Byzantine agreement with high probability. We provide safety and aliveness properties with high probability, which means that the probability tends to one as n, the number of processes goes to infinity. And it obtains O tilde of n word complexity and an expected constant time. I'll mention here that we are not the first to solve subquadratic uh, algorithms, but previous uh, subquadratic works made asynchrony assumptions. So Abarant solved for eventual synchrony and King Saya solved it for uh, synchrony. So the model we are assuming is the following. Um, we are assuming n processes in the permission settings, asynchronous, as I mentioned, where up to almost a third of the uh, processes may be Byzantine. And we also assume a trusted PKI and a delay adaptive adversary. And a delay adaptive adversary means that the adversary can use uh, the content of a message M sent by a, a correct process for scheduling another message M prime only if M causally precedes M prime. And we'll use this assumption later. A main tool we are using in our work is a verifiable random function or VRF for short, which is a pseudo random function that provides a proof of its correct computation. So you can think of someone randomly picking uh, a number and along with the number comes a proof that this is indeed the number he, he obtained. So the first use for VRF in our work is a shared coin algorithm. So a shared coin with a success rate row is a procedure executed by all correct processes, such that all correct processes output the same bit B with probability at least row. And what we're trying to do is effectively taking this uh, local sense of randomness provided by the VRF at each process and combine it to create a shared randomness among all correct processes. So let's try and do take one of these shared coin. So what we do is each process starts by executing a VRF and obtaining some initial value, some number V1, V2, and so on. And it sends it to all other uh, processes during phase one. Then every process uh, waits for N minus of messages, picks the, the minimum number if you heard of, and send it along in the phase two. Then again, a process waits for n minus f messages, picks the minimum value we heard of, and returns the least significant bit of this minimum value. And the reason that this simple algorithm works is the following. First, we define a common value to be a common that reaches f plus one correct processes during phase one. Then, due to intersection properties, all common values reach all correct processes during the second uh, phase. So what happens that the epsilon from the resilience uh, definition bounds the number of common values and the delay adaptive adversary commits to the uh, value that would be common in advance. So we end up with a constant probability that the global minimum will be a common value and then become uh, known by all correct processes. And then all correct processes will output its, uh, its least significant bit and designing upon the same bit. And this uh, algorithm is pretty simple. It composed of two all to all communication phases and uh, concludes to a quadratic communication. So this is, it works, but it's not good enough for our uh, requirements. So we try uh, to do take two, and in take two, what, uh, what we do is we elect committees to execute each step of the protocol. So in my uh, drawing, 
the elected processes are uh, drawn in purple. And the way processes are elected is by some local computation. And then here is the second use of the VRF. Each process execute a VRF, obtain a number. And if this number is below some threshold, then this process is elected to the committee. And if not, then uh, it is not. And only processes that are elected to the committee are sending the messages. For example, uh, in the first step, they're sending the first message. Then their uh, job in the committee comes to an end and they are done uh, and the adversary, for example, it wouldn't be able to corrupt them later because they're done with their job at this point. Then in the second step, again, every process executes a VRF and finds out whether or not is part of the, this step uh, committee. So if a correct process is elected, he speaks. If not, he doesn't. But what happens if a Byzantine process wants to speak and he wasn't elected? So this is not a problem because since he wasn't elected, he also cannot provide a proof of its election while sending his message. So whether he sends his message or not, no correct process uh, would listen to him without a proof. And uh, the way this improves the, the communication complexity is that we can find a sufficiently small committees in a logarithmic size so that the communication would be uh, a log n. Because on the first step, log n processes about log n processes will speak. They will send messages to all other processes because they cannot predict who will participate in the next one, and so on and so on. So we solved this problem, but we now encounter a different problem. So how many processes do we wait for in this, uh, in this case? In the previous algorithm, we waited for n minus f, which was uh, totally OK. We have n processes. At most, f are Byzantine. We will hear from n minus f messages. But now this is no longer the case, because we don't know exactly how many processes are being elected to the committee, nor do we know how many correct processes are elected. So what we do in the work, we define two parameters, w and b, so that using churn of bounds, we can prove with high probability that in each committee sample, at least w processes are correct, and at most b processes are Byzantine. Then instead of waiting to n minus f, we can only wait for w. And with high probability, uh, this will be OK. So uh, we overcome the, the liveness uh, obstacle. But what about safety? So we also need uh, properties about quorum's intersections. So we do define another uh, two properties. The first states that every two subsets of a committee of size W intersect by at least B plus one processes. So there is at least one correct process in the intersection. And every two subsets in a committee of size W and B plus one are intersecting by at least one process. And one thing to take into consideration when designing algorithms that use committees is that we want to make sure that there is a constant number of committees in our protocol. OK, so we're done with the shared con primitive. And now we turn to a different one, which is called a prover, which is defined as follows. Each correct process pi proposes an initial value vi and returns a set of values such that with high probability, the following properties hold. First, the validity property states that if all correct processes invoke a proof V with the same value V, then this, the only possible return value will be the single tone of V itself. For greater agreement, if a correct process PI returns a single tone V and a different correct process PJ returns the single tone W, then V must equal W. And lastly, for termination, if all correct processes invoke a proof with uh, invoke a proof, sorry, then a proof returns with a non-empty set of at all of them. And we make an additional assumption, which is that a prover can only be invoked with at most two different values. So it doesn't matter which are the values, but there cannot be uh, more than two different ones in the system. And I'll describe it first without committees in a high-level manner. 
and then we'll uh, move on to committees. It starts by each process sending its value to all other processes. Then when a process uh, hears the same value, let's say V for F plus one times, it echoes uh, V in the system and boosting its presence. And then if someone hears N minus F echo messages on the, on the, on the same value V, it sends an okay message on V and providing the graded agreement property. Then to finish off, every process uh, returns the values he heard of in the N minus F okay messages he receives. But we do have one problem here when trans it should be either transform it uh, to committees, we just switch the F plus one to B and the N minus F to the W parameters. And this should work, except there is one small problem there are two uh, values that could be echoed by the same process. So for example, if this process hears F plus one's uh, value zero and then F plus one's values uh, one, it will need to echo both of them, which is no good, not good because we said before, we want each process to only speak once before it uh, finishes its role in the committee. So the way we solve it, we define two different committees, one, for uh, the first value and the other for the second. And as we said, there are at most two different values at the approver. So there will be at most two different committees at the echo step of the algorithm. And the word complexity of this will conclude to n log to the power of 2n and uh, will allow us to use it still in a subquadratic manner. So now with a uh, shared gone and approver in hand, we can go and solve the Byzantine agreement. And we, our protocol is based on the Mustafa et al algorithm. So I won't get into details on it, but one thing that is important to notice is that uh, we have two invocation of the approve and one of the shared coin. And beside that, all the protocol, which is quite short uh, from the beginning, is local computation. So a process then does not need to communicate with other processes, except for when uh, doing so in the prover and shared coin, which is great because it means that we're done, right? Because we have the n log n uh, messages from the shared coin and n log to the power of two n of the prover, and it sums up to a subquadratic communication. So just to conclude our work, we provide the first formalization of randomly sampled committees using cryptography in asynchronous settings. Then we use this technique of committee sampling to present the first subquadratic asynchronous Byzantine agreement and short algorithm that works with high probability and it has expected O tilde of N word complexity and a constant expected time. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>